There's a lot of satisfaction in taking on a project on your own and doing work like a pro. So today we'll meet a couple of brewers, a pro and a home brewer. We'll learn a little bit about how to make beer and see their different setups for the same process. First up, Kevin Carey of Beguile Brewing. We brewed about 2,000 barrels a year. That's uh, uh, in gallons, it's about 62,000 gallons a year. We brew all different styles. Uh, we try to brew a, a whole slew of approachable beers and we've been around for about five years. We have an IPA called Hop Hazardly. Uh, every brewery should have a hop pun uh, and that's ours. We have a 10 barrel brew house and a total of 14 fermentation vessels. And in total, uh, we have about 17 employees. It's been pretty cool to see how far it's come in a short time. To get another perspective, I spent the afternoon with David LaForce and his friends. Together, they're the Power Outage Brewing Company. We're a group of six guys. We all got together. We kind of all have a love of beer and creating things. So we thought, well, let's get together and brew together. We brew every six weeks. As a matter of fact, we have a brew calendar that we produce so that all the wives know that, that we're brewing uh, on these weekends. And typically, then the weekends become kind of a family event and even a neighborhood event. So David, why do you like to home brew? Uh, I love beer, don't get me wrong, but for me it's about the creativity. I love to cook, I love to create things and then share them with people. I think as home brewers we have the benefit of being able to play with recipes because the cost impact is a lot less to us than it would be to a, a larger brewer who has to invest a lot more in their ingredients. For many things we can do at home, like brewing or canning or gardening and farming, there's not much difference from how it happens on a larger scale. Only the quantities are different. And if you do it yourself, well, the end product seems that much better. So let's get into it and see just how beer is made. The first step in the brewing process uh, starts with grain. We get all of our grain shipped in from our supplier and it's pre-milled. But many breweries across the country have mill rooms where they crush their own grain. Once we receive uh, the grain, we'll load it up into our hopper. The homebrew shop uh, mills it for us and then we go and pick it up and then it's delivered in a, a vacuum sealed bag so that the grains last as long as they possibly can until we start to mash them. We then pour the grains into the mash tun. For us, it's a kettle. We have a, a five gallon system and we have a half barrel system. The grain contains starches that we want to convert into fermentable sugars. We bring the grain down from our uh, hopper and at that time we'll start adding our water and that begins the process of mashing in. That's basically like making a big bowl of oatmeal. However long we mash, whether it's 60 minutes or 75 minutes, we're consistently looking to see that it stays at a constant temperature at the mashing temperature that we want. Once we're finished mashing in, we will then start the laudering process where we uh, recirculate that sweet sugar liquid onto the grain and we're trying to continue that conversion process until we have all of the really desired fermentable sugars that you need to make a really great beer. For home brewers, that's uh, slowly draining the mash liquid out of the pot and recirculating it back in to set the grain bed. What we don't want to have happen is, as the liquid goes out is for bits of grain to go into the boil kettle. That could create some off flavors in the beer. So wort is a sugary liquid that we've extracted all these sugars from the, the grain. We want wort in the boil kettle uh, and that's how we're gonna move along the brewing process. When you create wort, you need to boil for about 60 to 90 minutes, and part of that is to pasteurize the liquid. At that same time, we also add hops. Uh, we add hops at the beginning of the boil to add bitterness, and we add hops at the end of the boil to add uh, flavor and aroma. We want to get that over to the fermenter, but we need to drop the temperature from 212 degrees, which is boiling, down to 65 degrees in a very short amount of time, usually about 20 minutes. So we have what's called a plate chiller, it's through heat exchange, we run cold water through one side and we run the wort through to, to cool it and then we get it into our fermentation tank and then when it's of temperature then we add the yeast. Oh, the yeast plays a very important part in, in the beer process. Really the style of beer will dictate the type of yeast that you use, but it is extremely important because without yeast, without eating that sugar and the byproduct of that process is alcohol, you wouldn't have beer. Liz, our head brewer, has a PhD in microbiology, which uh, is uh, tiny science uh, for those at home. <laughs> so in between fermentation and packaging, we're gonna send some of the samples to the lab. Once she's approved it, uh, we'll send it off for packaging, and at that time, it'll either go into cans or into kegs for distribution and for sale in our tap room. Today, we do a combination of both, but we most definitely carbonate our beer in kegs and then transfer it to bottles if we want to bottle it. After meeting these guys, I feel like I could do this too. It's always fun to try something new and find a hobby that you love. And if you take the time to learn it, you can do it like a pro. So hop to it. 